Now, you may have noticed when we were introducing the operations, we said some things about division and subtraction. Right? We said that subtraction was the opposite of addition and that division was the opposite of multiplication. Next week, we're going to make those ideas even more specific. And when we get to that additional level of specificity, it'll become really, really clear that the main operations that we're really interested in are multiplication and addition. And that's a good thing, because multiplication and addition have some really, really nice properties. In order to describe these properties, I'm going to introduce an idea from algebra. A variable is a letter, or it could be another symbol, but we're going to use letters, that stands in for a number. Later on, we're going to use variables in a variety of ways. But right now, the way in which we're going to use a variable is as a letter that stands in for the same number each time it appears in a sentence. But other than that, it can be any number. In order to describe these properties of multiplication and addition, we're going to use variables. And we'll talk a little bit about how we're using these variables as we introduce the properties. So, the first property we're going to talk about is the commutative property. Multiplication and addition are each commutative. What does that mean? If I give you any two numbers, call the first one A, call the second one B, well, if I add the first plus the second, that's the same as adding the second plus the first. That's the commutative property of addition. And if I multiply the first by the second, that's the same as multiplying the second by the first. And if I multiply the first by the second, that's the same as multiplying the second by the first. Now, something I want to mention, once we have variables around, using this little x symbol for multiplication becomes kind of a problem because we don't want to mistake it for the letter x. So instead of that, we just use a dot for multiplication when there are variables around. Or in fact, we're allowed to just write the variables next to each other without any symbol at all. Without any symbol at all between them, two variables next to each other are multiplied. And we'll see that again when we work more with variables later on. Why is this so? Well, I'm going to show you with an example. If I add 2 plus 3, 2 pl blue boxes plus 3 purple boxes, that's the same as adding 3 plus 2, 3 purple boxes plus 2 blue boxes. It doesn't matter which side the purple boxes on, are on, there are still 5 boxes. For multiplication, it's easiest to think of this in terms of a rectangle. No matter which way up I draw my rectangle, it's the same size. Right, so that's the commutative property. We can add numbers in whichever order makes us happiest. We can multiply numbers in whichever order makes us happiest. The second property has to do with what happens when we add three numbers together or multiply three numbers together. Multiplication and addition are associative. They have the associative property. The associative property says if you give me any three numbers, a, b, and c, we can 
add the first two together and then add the third one, or we can add the second two together and then add that to the first one. That's the associative property of addition. The same property applies to multiplication. If I multiply three numbers together, well, I can mul do the first multiplication first, or I can do the second multiplication first. Something to be aware of. Notice that properties 1 and 2 combine to mean that if we have a big list of numbers to add up, or a big list of numbers to multiply together, we can think of it as just adding up a big list, or multiplying a big list, and we can reorder them and do the addition in whatever order we like, or do the multiplication in whatever order we like. And that's sometimes going to make our life a little bit easier. Okay, now properties 3 and 4 have to do with 1 and 0. Property 3 says, for any just single number you give me, I can add 0 to it and it doesn't do anything. This is called the additive identity property. And I can multiply it by 1 and it doesn't do anything. This is called the multiplicative identity property. This word multiplicative is hard to get used to. Right, this first part is just multiply. So multiply multiplicative. Property 4 just has to do with 0. It's creatively called the zero property of multiplication. Anything times zero is just zero. Those two are fairly simple properties. The most interesting thing we're saying about them is that those actually have a name. The last property, however, is a little bit complicated. Property 5 is called the distributive property, and it tells us what happens when we mix addition and multiplication. It says, for any three numbers A, B, and C, well, two things. If we multiply by A, what we get when we add b and c. That's the same as multiplying a times b, multiplying a times c, and then adding them together. The second thing it says is just that you can write a on the other side. Right, so what's going on here? I'm going to tell you a story where the distributive property applies. So Jack buys four cases of cola and three cases of root beer. Each case of cola costs three dollars and we want to work out how much he pays. There are two ways we could do it, right? The first way would be to say, well, he buys four cases plus three cases is seven cases. Seven cases times three dollars per case is twenty-one dollars. Right, so we've just worked out three times four plus seven. So we've just worked out 4 plus 3 times 3. Method 2 would be to say, for the cola, we have 4 cases times $3 per case. is twelve dollars. For the root beer, three cases 
times three dollars per case is nine dollars and then the total cost twelve dollars plus nine dollars is twenty one dollars so now we worked out four times three plus three times three method one is the left side of the distributive property method two is the right side of the distributive property. That's what's going on with the distributive property. We think of having two kinds of things that we're grouping together and then multiplying by something. We could instead multiply each kind of thing separately and then add together the results.